Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are installing level two self-driving, potentially, in my 2020 Subaru Outback Limited. Interesting, we'll see if it actually works. Join me. As you heard it, I have the Comma 3 system here, and we're gonna be installing that in my Subaru Outback. Basically, for those who haven't heard of it, a Comma 3 is a open source third-party system that plugs into the harness of, say, a Subaru, a Lexus, certain model Toyotas, and it overrides the vehicle's already um, assisted or automatic cruise control, steering, lane centering, stuff like that, and it greatly improves the, the overall self-driving process. For example, right now, in my 2020 Subaru Outback here, I have the door shut because the sun is bright, but in this 2020 Subaru Outback, I get lane centering and it will follow the car in front of me and come to a complete stop. Um, it won't automatically resume from a stop, I have to tell it to, but it will, it will follow the car, stop and go traffic and all that. Lane centering in a Subaru though, the stock system, it kind of is like a bowling ball going down a lane with bumpers. It'll kind of, it'll drift between the two lines. It'll keep it centered-ish, but it'll still, it'll still bounce a little between lines. We're gonna see if this Kama AI system, this is the Kama 3 that I'm installing today, will improve the driving. Will it, will it drive for me? Can I go completely hands-free? That is another thing of the uh, existing Subaru system. They make you have your hand on the steering wheel. And even if your hand's on the steering wheel, they want you to shake the steering wheel like a little bit every like 30 seconds, 60 seconds to make sure you're there. This system uses cameras to make sure that you're paying attention looking at the road so you don't have to move the steering wheel at all. So we are going to be installing this right now. So this is the Comma 3 system. We're gonna do a quick unboxing of it. Of course, here you have some instructions on how to get started, what all the parts in the kit come with. Put that over there. This is, of course, foam packaging. This is the actual Comma 3 unit right here. As you see, this is the display. It's almost like just like a phone turned sideways. Um, this is the front-facing camera here that makes sure that you're paying attention to the road. And then here on the back, there are two cameras to monitor the road, a USB-C cable that connects to your car system. This is where it mounts to the uh, to the wall. And then there's a power button right here, it looks like. And a lot of cooling. I can only imagine how hot this gets. And then here is the accessory box. Of course, comes with a USB-C cable to connect from the display to the um, converter box. And then this is the mount for the windshield. It gives you 3M tape and mounts on the windshield like that. This is a permanent. The mount is permanent. You would have to replace the tape if you want to change out mounts. And then additionally, this is the OBD2 um, connector. So this connects to the OBD2 port, OBD port under the dash and then gives a RJ45, like a network cable port, right there. We have this network cable. This is what's going to run from under the dash. It's going to plug in right there. It's going to run up to the top of the dash. And then up the top of the dash, under the eyesight, we have this harness right here. And then this harness is going to connect to that network cable. And then you'll see this USB-C cable. It's this one right here that connects to the unit itself. And then this connector right here is what connects to the existing eyesight harness. One end is going to go into the harness. One end is going to go into the, into the chassis. So we're kind of like, as, as a network term, it would be man in the middle. We are sitting in the middle of all these connections coming out. So the comic can intercept connections and make changes to the system. So let's get to installing this. All right, so here we are inside of my 2020 Subaru Outback. So first we need to install this harness right here. So this harness is the location connection is right here under under this part of the, of the upper dash. So we need to take a eight millimeter wrench, open the um, sunglass holder, and there are two bolts right here. Second step is taking off this this black surround right here. Be careful not to hit those two buttons right there. But you want to use a uh, plastic wedge tool and put it in the back to pry it free. Oh, this is the rocker for this light right here. So this fell off and I pried from the back center right here and peeled it down. Then we can do the same thing with the whole surround. 
Yeah, so I put it in, in the back like this and just pried down. And then the whole connection just drops. Okay. So you push forward a little bit and the whole thing comes down. Okay, next we want to take this long connection right here. So we were taking this long network cable looking connection. This is an RJ45. And one end is going to plug inside of the RJ45 connector here. And then this is the connector that we're gonna run along the dash to the ground, to the, to the floor area, driver's side floor area, because that is gonna plug into this OBD2 reader. See, there's a little connection right here on the OBD2 reader. You're just gonna click it in there and then this will plug in under the dash. We have this USB-C cable here, and we're gonna plug in the flat end, not the elbow end. The elbow end's gonna plug into wherever I put the comma three dash. So we're gonna plug in the long end right here, and then that's, that's basically it. Really, you wanna make sure the USB-C cable can get to the area right below the mirror, because the, the comma AI is gonna sit right on the right on the windshield, right above the mirror, um, kind of right in line with the eyesight, but you wanna make sure that it can sit in a nice open area. So there is a cutout right here in the bottom center. Let's say, you know, if you're looking at a clock, six o'clock, it looks like I can run it out that hole right there. And maybe I can just run both of them out there. I'm gonna try that. The idea is to get the uh, cables running where they're not getting pinched anywhere. There we go. That's sitting a lot better. We're just gonna run this up here for now. Next, we're gonna take some alcohol and spray it on the windshield because you really get one shot to mount this thing. And the last thing you want is it not sticking because you have a bunch of gunk on the windshield. Oh, and I have the car running because it is like 90 some degrees out. And I've never had this camera overheat before. And now it is, so that's fun. But I got this clip back in. These front two sections here, you kinda gotta wiggle until they fall back into place and you hook the fronts on and then you can push the back on. We just got to reinstall this cover without pushing any buttons. So mounting the comma system on the uh, windshield, you have this very basic mount here and it will connect. It will slide in to it like this. So I'm gonna get an idea of where I wanna put it. The directions say you need to put it low enough so you can see the top of this screen under your mirror from where you're driving and you want it in the center of the vehicle very easy to use the uh, rear view mirror mount as your your center line so i can kind of see this is where i need to put it and then get an idea of how far down it needs to go and then if i want to take it off i just pull up on it like this and take it off so i'm going to let it let it sit and stick to that a little bit while I run this cable down the A-pillar. So this A-pillar here, simple, you just pull down on it, and then all I'm gonna do is run it, snake it down here, and tuck it underneath. Insulation is basically done. I'm going to put the cable, got a little bit of extra slack, so I'm gonna leave the cable here. Now I'm not permanently mounting this yet, I'm going this as a trial period, so I have it running under here and then over here under the a pillar this is an a pillar first pillar here is always a the middle one is b your rear one is c now i'm going to turn the car off when i plug in this obd2 connection all right now last thing i have to do is just plug in the comma ai right here just like that you see comma starting up it does run off a of battery and it it knows to shut itself off when the car battery reaches a certain level and we'll start the car up all right, so we're doing calibration now. It says calibration in progress. Drive over 15 miles an hour. So here we are out on the road. I'm turning my cruise control on, which activates the, the system there. And then I'm going to activate it. Speed limit here is 40, so I'm gonna set it to 40. And we're gonna see what it does. So I see the camera is maintaining the green line in the middle of the road. Doing a good job of keeping the car centered, I gotta say. Speed limit's increasing to 50, so I'll send it up to 50 now. It's not wandering as much as it used to be. The stock Subaru system would wander, bounce back and forth. This is, it's maintaining a pretty straight line on the road. All right, so I think my other camera overheated, so I switch, I'm switching over to this one now. 
so you won't be able to see what the display of the auto of the um, of the open AI is doing so um, I was wondering earlier today like when it's maintaining the when it's driving on the road when you want to switch lanes you're supposed to hit the hit the um, turn signal and then move the steering wheel to change lanes I was wondering if you're on a two-lane road and you're riding next to the yellow and if you hit the blinker will and then move the thing will it will it take you into the opposite lane yes it will <laughs> so don't do that oh, wow. so now I'm gonna take it on some twisty roads because that road was very straight so let's take it on a little bit of a curve and see what it does so I took the turn turn on um, cruise control again it's taking over steering is active it's ramping itself back up to speed again it's a, it's a, accelerating about the same speed as the original Subaru system does so it is doing that so it is, this is, I would say, this is a noticeable upgrade over the Subaru stock system. The Subaru stock system feels like I'm bouncing all over the road. This system definitely seems like it will stay centered more. So, back on the road again. The speed limit's 40 right now. It's locking me in at 40. I do not have to keep my hand on the wheel. It is very actively keeping the car centered. This is weird. <laughs> this is totally weird. All right, we got a really sharp turn coming up. Why is every turn I make, there's a car on the opposite direction? All right, all right. It did it, it turned, it made, made the turn fine. This definitely gives a, a brain upgrade to the, to the eyesight system. The eyesight system is pretty good, but this definitely improves its IQ by several numbers. All right, so that was pretty impressive. It definitely kept a good center line with the eyesight system in a 2020 Subaru Outback. I'm going on a road trip tomorrow, so I'm going to I'm going to film some more video of a longer road trip. How do I feel after a longer road trip? Because I've had the the Subaru Outback since 2020. I got it, I think December 2019. So right when the 2020 came out. So gonna compare it I, i've driven this this particular road trip many times before with the eyesight system so i'm used to having to pretty much steer myself or if i use the the um subaru lane centering how it reacts so i'm going to test out how it works on the road trip so i'll let you know all right so i'm about three and a half hours into this four and a half hour road trip and the amount of times i've had to touch the steering wheel is very very little this has been doing an excellent job of keeping the car centered, following the car in front of it. Um, as far as Subaru compatibility goes, it does utilize the two buttons here to um, adjust the distance between the car in front of me. Of course, it resume and up and down adjusts the speed by five. And if I wanted to adjust the um, catch up speed, I could do that in the uh, settings there. But as you see here on the display, it shows the speed I have it set to, the speed it's traveling, and then the road in front of me. You can see it has lines on the left and right marking where the road is. So it, it, it does that even if like the, the white lines disappear. Like that was always something with the Subaru system. As soon as the white line dis disappears, it kind of gives up all hope and it doesn't work well, but this pushes through that and, and maps it through those missing lines. It hasn't had many issues of where it doesn't work. So if I want to do a lane change, all I need to do is hit the turn signal and it'll say, move the steering wheel to the right. All I have to do is tap it to the right and then the car will shift lanes and go into that. I'll also uh, zoom into the display and show me doing it again back in the other direction. So I'm going to shift to the left lane again, move the steering wheel a little bit and it shifts to the left lane. And at least in the Subaru, I've heard in other vehicles like Lexus that you can be kind of abrupt, but it does it pretty smoothly. It doesn't like speed me into the other lane like I'm gonna lose control. So that has been doing a good job. And then as far as the steering wheel goes, as far as the steering wheel goes, you can see that this is how it's controlling it. Um, uh, I don't have to touch it at all. And it's just maintaining the speed. This road is a far less busy road than like Route 81 when I was on that before. 
Um, Route 81, there was a lot of cars, a lot of traffic, and it did fine following the car in front of me, if there was if there was a car in front of me. Um, it did break a little sharply, like if there was sudden, um, if there was sudden stops in traffic, it would break pretty sharply, but for the most part, it does exactly what the Subaru EyeSight system already does. And see, my heads up display just said there's a car in front of me, and now the speed is slowing down to match that car in front of me. If I want to go around it, turn on my blinker, move the steering wheel to the left a little bit, and now it shifted lanes and is now passing. So all in all, I would say, do I recommend this system? If you have a Subaru Outback 2020s, I think 2020 to 2022, Subaru Outback and there's other Subaru models that, that it supports. Would I recommend it? Is it worth is it worth the money? Put up right here what it costs. Is it worth the money to get this upgrade? And I would say absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. So if you drive the car a lot in highway and stop and go traffic, stuff like that. It doesn't have more of the advanced features like um, some of the newer Lexus models have, where it has more control over the steering. Um, this is heavily relying on Subaru's internal system in this car, but the fact that it keeps this thing so straight in the middle of the, in the middle of the lane right here, and I don't have to constantly move the steering wheel to say that I'm here. Shoot, even if I'm holding the steering wheel and it's just going in a forever straight line like I'm going right now, the Subaru system would be like, move the wheel so we know you're here. This doesn't have you do that. This, this camera will detect if I am not looking at the, uh, at the road in front of me. And there you have it. That was the unboxing, installation, and then a real drive of the Comma 3 um, self-driving system. This actually brings level two, maybe level two plus. Um, there's a whole site that shows the levels and everything self-driving to a Subaru Outback. It does, it does, and it, it improves on the features that Subaru already gives with the EyeSight system. It raises the IQ, as I mentioned. Um, this was a demo unit I had. I got this from a, a buddy of mine. Thank you, Melvin, for it. Um, I'm definitely going to be considering, and yeah, I'll be buying the uh, new Kama 3X. That's the new version that just came out. Pretty much the same features from what I see online, just a better hardware, better housing to make the unit itself overall more reliable. So I would definitely pick this up if you have a car that supports it. It dramatically improves the driving experience and lets you, it lets you relax a little. But what they mention the most, you must pay attention. You have to pay attention to the road while doing this. This is not level three, four, five self-driving where you can take a nap, look on your phone, watch a movie. You can't do that. You need to actually pay attention to the road still. This just takes the steering and and uh, acceleration braking control away from you on, on highway. It assists you. It doesn't do it for you. So with that said, if you like this kind of content, definitely consider subscribing below. If you like this video, drop a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know. Drop a comment below. Doing any of those greatly helps the channel. I'll see you next time. Peace.